Actually, while we're here, let's go ahead and just talk about all the other masking options. Well, not all of them, but quite a few more of them. So you hold down control, you got mask pin selected. Now what I like to do when I'm switching between masking options, if you go in here without holding down control, and you hit M to narrow it down to the M brushes, you're gonna see there are masking things in here mixed in with the masking brushes. If you hold down control, however, and then you click on this, you're gonna see it just narrows it down to all the masking options available to you. So this is one I prefer. So let's talk about masking in conjunction with stroke and conjunction with alpha and the different changes we can make. Now, when we get into the brushes and the alpha and the stroke options later on, a lot of these same principles are still going to apply. So hold down control, we got mask pin selected. Let's go to mask circle. So I'm gonna select mask circle. So now I'm gonna hold down control, mask circle selected. I can hold down control and then I can drag out and I have a circle. If you hold down the space bar, you're gonna see you can move this around. So you can hold down control and move the circle around and then you can drop it. Now, because I'm masking through my object with X symmetry turned on, that's the result I'm gonna get. I'm gonna hold down control and drag to unmask. And now I'm just gonna hold down all control and then just mask through here. So we're masking a perfect circle straight back like so. Now, if you wanna make this a perfect circle, uh, go to here to the stroke while holding down control and let's chain, turn it to square. And also let's turn on center. So if we control drag to unmask, we can hold down control. And now, as you can see when you drag this out, it's dragging out from the center and it's constrained to a perfect circle. So we can go through here and we can just mask a perfect circle this way or unmask. Again, just control drag to unmask. We can mask a circle here and then hold down alt and then we can unmask and now we have just a ring. Now remember it's masking all the way through our object. So we can hold down control alt to kind of unmask this area. There's another thing I can skip ahead. If you hold down control shift, you can actually grab like select lasso and you can hold down alt. And if you get rid of anything on the back, you can hold down control and now we can mask here and we can mask through and there's nothing to mask and there's no geometry for it to hit. So if you hold down control shift and bring everything back, you won't mask. We're gonna get the visibility in just a second, but that's a sneak preview of how you can avoid masking through an entire object by using visibility. Now we'll control drag to unmask this. Let's see what other options we got. We got mask curve. So if you hold down control and select mask curve, you can see if you hold down control and you drag out a mask curve line, it's a line with a gradient and you can hold down space bar to move it around. Now, if you tap Alt once, it's gonna be a Bezier curve. So it's gonna be a nice soft curve. So you can tap Alt once and then Alt twice and then Alt again. And you can start making a curved line around your object. And if you let go, you're gonna see it's gonna mask from the line out towards the gradient. So to demonstrate that again, I'm gonna hold down Control and drag to unmask. Then Control drag out again. And you're gonna see we have a line with a gradient. So if I just leave that, it's gonna mask from the line towards the gradient. Now, if I hold down control and tap alt twice, that's gonna give me a hard edge or a hard corner. And then alt once gives me a soft corner. So you can mix and match hard corners and soft corners. And you can mask through your object like that. All the other same rules still apply. So you can hold down uh, control to drag through, alt tap twice to give you a sharp corner. And then you can hold down control and tap and that'll blur it out or control alt tap and that'll sharpen it up. Or control drag and to unmask. If you hold down control, Let's go to mask lasso. This one's really useful. Uh, remember when we selected the nose earlier, you hold down control with mask lasso and that's essentially changing. I should have been talking about this before. So if you hold down control and mask curve, you're gonna see it's mask curve, but the stroke changed to curve. If you go to mask lasso, the stroke changed to lasso. If you go to mask circle, the stroke changed the circle. So really all of these masking options are just changing the stroke parameters. So Again, back to mask lasso, we've changed it to a lasso stroke essentially. You can hold down control and then you can just use a lasso to mask out the nose. You can use a space bar still if you want to, uh, but we can just mask that nose out a little bit easier. And then you can turn it to this direction. It's like, you know what, I got too much of that upper lip. Hold down control and then alt, and then you can unmask with the lasso as well. So hold down control. Mask pin we've already talked about, but even with mask pin selected, you know, we have this functionality, we're gonna paint on it and then control drag to drag out through here. You still can change this. It's basically a freehand stroke. So if you change this from freehand to circle, now mask pin is gonna act like a circle stroke. If you change it back to freehand, now it's gonna act like a freehand stroke. The rest of these are self-explanatory and mask interior and exterior I'll get to later. Those are custom masks. Now let's change it back to mask pin. And if we change it from the freehand stroke to say the drag rect stroke, what that's gonna do is it's going to, if you drag out here, it's just gonna drag a rectangle. But if you drag in here, it's going to drag your alpha on your object. Now we don't have an alpha loaded, so it's basically just dragging my 
focal shift fall off onto my object. You can see, you know, it's dragging a circle essentially. But if you hold down control and swap out your alpha to maybe a star, hold down control and drag, and now you're going to see it's going to drag rectangular on my object. So I can just go through here and just drag rect this star all over my object. Now you're going to see it kind of fades out at the sides, and the same is true for when you have a um, say a standard brush with an alpha loaded, your focal shift is going to come into play. So if I hold down control and I change this focal shift down to negative 100, now we're not getting any of that fall off built into the, so if I hit, tap S to make my brush size really big, and then tap O for my focal shift, you're going to see negative 100 down to zero. See the distance between these inside and outside circles, that's a fall off. So if you have no fall off because they're both the same, now when you hold down control and change our focal shift down to negative 100, you're going to see we can drag out and all the corners stay nice and sharp because there's no focal shift blurring them at the edges. Now just like any other thing, with masking you can hold down control and alt and you can unmask. So you can go through here and you can unmask, control alt, and that's a drag rect. You're basically dragging a rectangle onto your object. So let's control drag to unmask. And even with drag rect selected with an alpha, it's still going to load your alpha in here. And if you want this to be a perfect circle or a perfect square, uh, you're probably going to have to change it from a drag rect to, say, a rectangle stroke. And now you can say square and uh, center if you want to. And now you can drag out a perfectly ratioed star. Let's change this to drag dot. And we'll keep our star alpha on there. So now if you have drag dot selected, it's just going to take your brush size and keep dragging different versions of your alpha on your object. And you can just click and drag and it'll go around your object just like this. And again you can hold down control and then alt and it'll unmask that object. Control alt tap to sharpen, control tap to blur, control drag to unmask. Now if you've been mas messing with your brushes a lot or even your masking brushes you can go in here to your brush menu down at the very bottom you can say reset all brushes. That'll reset your brushes to what you would load in at start. So now my mask pin is back to my freehand stroke, and now I'm kind of back where I started. Let's talk a little bit about masking. So we've already talked about how in the polypane adjust, you can kind of bring your mask back out, but also underneath masking, there is a mask by polypaint under the mask by color submenu here. So pretty self-explanatory if we go over here to mask by polypaint. We have very much the same menu here or interface. We can click and drag, and if I want to mask all these purple areas out, we can go in here, we can change our tolerance down. If we want to grab a little bit more of the purple blues, you can drag out and you can pick some of those, and again, change that tolerance down. So again, you're just kind of picking most of the colors that you want. Now you're going to see over here, um, ma overwrite mask and unmask. And again, if you want to hide your colors, you can kind of see exactly what you're masking here, or hide your materials if you just want a flat color to see a little bit better. And you can invert your mask if you'd like, but I'm going to go ahead and keep this mask here, and have override on, we're going to hit OK. Now if we go into solo mode here, you're going to see, okay, now all of this stuff is masked. Now let's say, you know what, I want that mask in conjunction with uh, a cavity mask that I have. Unfortunately, if we go over here to mask by cavity, we'll leave mask by color and mask by cavity open. Uh, mask by cavity intensity, you can just kind of play around with that. I'm just going to overwrite my previous mask. So I go in here, and if we go up here to our subtool, and we hold down, uh, or we just turn off our polypaint, you can see, now you can see our mask a little bit better. Uh, you may be thinking if I go into render and fade opacity, it actually fades our mask and our polypaint. So that's not totally useful, but we'll get more into that later. So basically we can turn our polypaint off, we can see our mask, uh, but again, it overwrote our original mask. However, if I already have a cavity mask and then I go into mask by color, mask by polypaint, and I want to, you know, again, grab these purples, instead of override, if I click mask, and again, I change that tolerance down, it's going to keep my cavity mask and mask where I have that purple. So if I go hit OK, you're going to see my cavity mask is still there and I have purple. In fact, I can go back into Mask by Poly Paint. I can grab maybe some of these lighter blues here, turn it back to mask, and just keep adding to that mask. And if you want to see that, just turn off Poly Paint here and you can see, OK, you can just continue to continuously add to that mask there. Now, one thing we were playing with earlier. We'll grab our little wrestler head we were playing with. Again, you can go in here to mask by color, mask by poly paint. And this one's a little bit easier to kind of see. You can very quickly just go through and mask out the orange, or you can invert the mask. And we'll go ahead and drop that tolerance. And then when you come out of there, there's your mask. And now at that mask, you can actually go down here to poly paint, adjust colors, and it'll go ahead and inherit that mask as well. So now if you just go through here and you start doing like RGB intensity or you know changing that hue, 
and then hit OK. Control drag to unmask, you're going to see that's the result you get. And of course, if you don't like any of that, just hit Control Z uh, to undo it. Now there's another cool masking feature, so let's go ahead and grab a Sphere 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into Edit Mode, Make Poly Mesh 3D, hold down Control, let's just, just mask down the middle of here, or even better, let's go into Geometry, Dynamesh, go ahead and turn Blur down to zero, turn Dynamesh on, and let's hold down Control then Alt, unmask all this, hit W, and we'll just drag all of this down. Control drag, Control drag again. Now you can see we have a big cut in the middle of here. Another thing we can do is we can go into our clay brush here, drag the intensity all the way up, hold down Alt, and then just kind of push in a couple times to give yourself kind of a, a built-in hole in here. And if you want to clean these up, you can go in here to Alt H, and you can hold down, I'm sorry, not Alt H, go into your H polish brush, BH, and then I'll grab uh, your H polish brush. Sorry, BHP, Alt H is my hotkey. And you can go through here and you can very quickly just clean up these edges, make them nice and sharp. And control drag again, since so we have a Dynamesh. And one thing I want to talk about is if I go in here, hold down control and I'm in mask pin, as I mask across these edges, you're going to see it just, it doesn't, it disregards all of these edges. You can just mask right across here, you can mask right across here, and here it doesn't really care. Now one thing you can do is you can hold down control and then turn off or turn on auto masking back face masking. So now when I control drag and I paint, if it doesn't see those polygons, it's not gonna mask them. So you can see that's a good way to kind of truncate your masking. So you just kind of go along and as long as the camera can't see, uh, it won't mask those polygons. Now an easier way, control drag to unmask everything, is if you hold down control, and the reason I'm holding down control, so when I'm changing these brush options over here in our brush menu, it's changing those options on the mask pin that we have here. I'm gonna go in here to depth, you're going to see we have a depth mask option. So if I turn that on and I drag this point down, I don't want to go all the way to zero, but just to a very small number. And then I hold down control and I start going on this like convex surface. It's going to stop at that edge there. However, if I start on this concave surface, it'll just completely disregard everything. So it's useful if you just want to start on like these outer surfaces here and it'll paint a mask across there and kind of stop itself naturally. Of course it does have its limitations. However, if you hold down control and you drag this bottom one up again, not all the way to zero, but to a very small number, now you can go through here and it'll stop along that edge and if you start on the inside, it'll stop along that inside edge too. Now depending on how clean your geometry is and how sharp your edges are will help it find those edges but you can do both now. So if you wanted to mask, in fact, just this little middle section here, you can very quickly just go through and just mask uh, that middle section and the brush itself will see the surface and kind of stop itself uh, right along here. So this is an easy way if you just want to mask out or along one plane or one surface in here, you can start on one and it'll just kind of find those edges and stop right along those borders. Now, if you use this a lot, you can hold down control, mask pin, brush save as and I saved this in my uh, C program files Pixelogic version number startup brush presets you're gonna see I have a mask depth option in there so when I start up ZBrush hold down control and click I already have a mask depth with those settings already done